So you've all tuned in today to learn about seven bikes that command respect. This one should be pretty straightforward. Number one, we've got the Gen 1 Hayabusa. Number two, we've got the Turbo Hayabusa. Duh. Number three, we've got the Stretched Hayabusa. That's a real badass, bro. Gotta keep the front end down with those hard pulls. Number four, there's the Busa with the Nitrous Kid. Damn, you know she's kind of spicy in a straight line. Number five, the Hayabusa with Heath's Leather as the Joker airbrush paint job. Number six, we have the ever-elusive Scram Busa on knobby tires with an upswept exhaust. If you're not scrambling your Busa, you're doing it wrong. And last, Lastly, in the number seven spot, we have the Honda Super Cup. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Okay, the Busa boys have left the chat, and we can talk about some bikes that make a little bit more sense. I think some Hayabusa riders don't know they're supposed to shoot nitrous into the engine and not just take hits off the bottle themselves to experience a fleeting moment of pronounced weightlessness as a rest from the inescapable burden of owning such a cursed motorcycle. Okay, no more Busa talk. Time for the real list. Do men and women alike chuckle at the petite stature of your boar and stroke? Maybe you no longer be scorned with shame. Here are seven motorcycles that command respect. Before we get started, I'd like to shout out the sponsor today Today's video, Manscaped. I'll talk more about them later in the video. As always, let me remind you to click the notification bell so you'll be the first to know about the next expose on motorcycle culture. All right, motorcycles that command respect, I got it. This one is the YouTube grandpa's. The bike in the number seven spot is the Yamaha VMAX, baby. The VMAX is very much product of 1980s consumerist bravado when people were happily living their lives under the tenets of Reaganomics and willing to spend big money on the newest, biggest, and fastest things. Motorcycles were no exception. The VMAX is a cruiser that represented the American and values of the time in a way that manufacturers like Harley Davidson did not. It had futuristic styling with over the top power and advanced technology. The VMAX first debuted in 1985 and remained pretty much unchanged through 2007. It had an 1197cc V4 engine equipped with proprietary V-Boost technology that opened a butterfly valve in the intake manifold as engine RPMs rose from about 5750 RPMs until it was fully open at 8000 RPM. This generation of Yamaha VMAX made about 145 horsepower and 83 foot-pounds of torque. Please consider that for a moment, that a bike from 1985 with that frame and those brakes made 145 horsepower. What the hell? The next generation of VMAX, which was made from 2009 until 2020, had a 1679cc V4 that made 197 horsepower and 123 foot-pounds of torque at the crank. I've ridden the Rocket 3, I've ridden turbo boosts, but I'll tell you what, I really want to ride a VMAX. If you've got a VMAX and you're in the Austin area, shoot me an email at videos at yamanoob.co. I wanna to talk to you. In place of V-Boost, the modern VMAX had an electronically modified intake system that shortened in length as RPMs rose. Talk to any rider in his 50s and ask him what the best, fastest, or craziest motorcycle ever made, and I bet you he'd mention the VMAX. I'm not gonna say it's necessarily a handsome looking motorcycle. It looks a bit weird, but more like a bike from an anime series come to life. It's got history, it has clout, it has zero regard for anything other than being fast and reminding old men that they can still achieve an erection without pharmaceuticals influences, and if that doesn't command respect, I don't know what does. Plus, Nick Cage rode one in Ghost Rider 2. Yes, there was a sequel to Ghost Rider, and it's not Ghoster Rider. Missed opportunity. All right, moving on. The motorcycle in number two spot is a little bit of a shameless plug, but a worthy entry nonetheless is the Ducati Street Fighter V4S. The Ducati logo in and of itself commands respect and shows other riders and normies alike that you're in the upper echelon of motorcycle society. You are an elite. We have a Street Fighter V4S as a giveaway bike in the shop right now, which allows me to talk about it in a way that is more objective and analytical as I am not what many would likely expect from the average Ducati chat. The prototypical Ducati rider is self-assured and respected wherever he goes. Huh, as if, with the exception of the mud wrestling event during Daytona Bike Week. They have plenty of cash to drop on a premium motorcycle and enough left over for Desmo Valve service. They'd also like to have a more romantic partner than Rob Lowe in the prime of his sex addiction. The other type of Ducati owner is the one who didn't heed the warnings of the cost of ownership and now are suffering under the financial burden of their last oil change. Really, any Ducati will command respect from normies. It just comes with the pedigree of the brand, but the Street Fighter V4S will negate any potential uncertainty. It has an 1103cc V4 that makes 208 horsepower and 90 foot-pounds of torque. It is an incredible premium riding experience that gives the rider the ability to modify even the smallest minutia in their settings. And you cannot forget about that absolutely intoxicating V4 exhaust note that revs out to 14,500 RPM. Roll up on a Ducati Street Fighter and everyone will know who the top dog is at bike night. 
unless you have a Turbo Busa. But yeah, this is a giveaway bike, so one of you will get to be that said top dog whenever we give it away in a few months. Go over to yamanube.co to find out more. If your bike commands respect on bike night, you gotta make sure your man parts command respect on date night as well. The easiest way to earn the respect of potential partners is through a little bit of essential male grooming. If your garden needs tending to, head over to manscaped.com and check out their skin safe lawnmower 4.0. It is a perfect tool to cut down that crotch force without sending you to the ER for nicking a vital artery. If you need some serious maintenance, spring for one of their packages that comes with some extra goodies like ball deodorant, toner spray, or even the weed whacker ear and nose hair trimmer in the performance and platinum packages. Follow the link below and go to manscaped.com slash yammy to get 20% off automatically plus free shipping. Again, that's manscaped.com slash yammy. Thanks, Manscaped. Now back to the video. The next motorcycle that commands respect is the Triumph Rocket 3. The Rocket 3 has been in production since 2004 and it is still available today. This motorcycle isn't just a whole snack. It's 2500cc three-cylinder engine is more like an all-you-can-eat steak dinner at the Golden Corral, diarrhea included. Nothing commands respect more than creating a production motorcycle with the biggest engine ever when literally no one asked you to. This 2.5 liter engine, yes, 2.5, you know you're talking about a special bike when you describe the size of the engine using multiple liters, makes 100. 65 horsepower and 163 foot pounds of torque. Those torque figures are absolutely ridiculous. You could put a tow hitch on the Rocket 3 and tow a camper cross country, probably. The Rocket 3 has a muscular stance, beefy tires, and a freaking car engine jammed in the frame. Even just upon seeing this motorcycle, any layperson knows that it is something serious and a bit strange, even if they can't quite pinpoint exactly what it is. Is it even of this world? It looks more like a prop from a sci fi movie than an honest to god production motorcycle. And the knowledgeable rider instantly recognizes the Rocket as the tire shredding torque monster that it is. Apollo 11? Forget about it. Even Buzz Aldrin would be humbled if he had a Rocket 3 nestled neatly between the legs of his spacesuit. The Rocket 3 is certified respectable. The bike in the number 4 spot of respect commanding motorcycles is the Kawasaki Ninja H2, as much as it pains me to say that as a Turbo Hayabusa boy. While the Rocket 3 is an absurd motorcycle that no one asked for, the H2 and respectively ZH2 are bikes that came into the existence after a rogue band of Kyle's waterboarded the Kawasaki design and engineering executives with monster energy until they agreed to produce a 200 horsepower supercharged Ninja from the factory. In reality, the H2 is named after the H2 Mach 4, which was a three-cylinder 750cc two-stroke motorcycle that Kawasaki made in the early 70s that was considered to be one of the fastest accelerating motorcycles in the production at that time. The modern H2 is an invocation of the soggy ghost of Kawasaki's earlier high-performance wet dream. The Ninja H2 has a supercharged 998cc inline 4 that makes an earth-shattering 228 horsepower and 105 foot-pounds of torque. It has super sharp, angular, and aggressive styling that illustrates the uncompromising nature of this motorcycle. If you're riding an H2 or the hyper-naked ZH2, you better believe someone will know what's going on as the exhaust screams and the supercharger whistles and flutters like an exotic supercar. The H2 and ZH2 are so damn cool and make up for all the lame bikes Kawasaki has made over the years. Also, tuners and ECU hackers have gotten their ways with these bikes, and I've seen these bikes making like 300 horsepower. It's crazy. Coming in at number five is none other than the Honda CBR 1000 RRR SPR Fireblade. I mean, come on, look at this thing. It's one of the few motorcycles still made by Honda that is reminiscent of their time spent in the 80s and 90s making truly aggressive, exciting, and forward thinking motorcycles. It is symbolic of a time in Honda's history when more of their RD costs was spent coming up with edgy names that sounded like legendary weapons in an open world RPG, then figuring out more ways that can take the spirit out of motorcycling in order to sell bikes to people who can't or won't use a clutch. The Fireblade moniker has been attributed to a few different race spec motorcycles from Honda since the 90s, but the current Blade has a 999cc inline 4 that shares the same bore and stroke as the RC213V motorcycle from MotoGP. The American spec, this motorcycle makes 183 horsepower and 84 foot pounds of torque, but we got ours flashed last year and it was probably making like 215 horsepower. It was, it was crazy fast. Average riders won't need much more than that to get in trouble on public roads, but there is still plenty to brag about when talking to 600cc boys. Especially if you get the 30th anniversary edition with the white, red, and blue colorway that's inspired by the airbrush jazz solo cup style paint job on the original 1999 Blade. It's an amazing, iconic motorcycle and commands so much more respect than a Honda Rebel 300, CBR 500R, NC750, or any other painfully adequate bike Honda has managed to stuff down the throat of some unsuspecting rider over the last 50 years. Speaking of painfully adequate, we can't do a list like this and not mention Harley Davidson. I know I'm kind of sick of it too, but hey guys, HD sells more motorcycles than anyone else in America, and it's kind of hard to deny that middle class dads are so infatuated with the brand that they'll kiss the road any big stonk and V twin has leaked oil on. So, anyway, no. 
Number six on the list is the Harley Davidson Road Glide. And now it doesn't necessarily have to be a road glide, just about any 800 pound bagger will make a true Harley pirate cream in their assless chaps. But for today's purposes, the Road Glide gets to be singled out and wear the dunce cap in the corner of the classroom. The touring bikes from Harley Davidson have been around since 1980. The engine specs don't matter all that much for bikes like this because Harley riders refuse to use the metric system, but modern baggers usually have around 1800cc V-twin engines and a healthy smattering of torque. But these bikes aren't ridden for power or performance, they exist to be parked out in front of the worst in town so middle-aged men can sit on each other's $25,000 chrome vibrators. The last bike on our list is the Suzuki Hub. Boosa, baby! You know I had to put it on this list despite the little zingers in the intro. I mean, come on, it's the Haya frickin' Boosa, dude. They're absurdly fast and arguably a little ugly, looking like an inline four beluga whale or something, and often ridden by the most cringeworthy riders that are like if Vin Diesel replaced Marlon Brando in a remake of The Wild One. The Boosa is a physical incarnation of a meme, a glob of clay that any mentally ill artist can form in their own demented creation. You can show up to bike night on the most horrific example of a custom high Boosa that's gone too far, equipped with a Wish.com turbo kit, airbrush Teletubby paint job, a white fur seat, and underglow that pulsates to the beat of a crazy frog blasting from the JBL speakers zip tied to your triple tree, and without a doubt, a handful of people are still going to think it's a really cool motorcycle, just because it's a Hayabusa. And even normies know what a Hayabusa is, it just commands respect, the very word of it, and there's something special about that. That's why I got one and turboed it myself, just to see how the other half lives. Thank you for watching the video. If you want to see more like it, make sure to subscribe. If not, may you be haunted by the ghost of forgotten stock Hayabusa swing arms. Fact. Most American car horns honk in the key of F. When the car was first commercialized, the amount of notes in a car horn indicated social status. The more honks, the more elite. Goodbye. Well, look at you. You've made it to the end of another Yammy Noob video. You should consider yourself pretty lucky because I have curated this one right over here for you to continue watching. It's probably just as good as the one you just saw. Unless you hated the one you just saw. I don't know. Maybe leave me a comment down below about how much you hated it as well, too. Or just keep watching this one. Make sure you keep watching Yammy Noob. Don't forget to keep watching Yammy Noob. That's the most important thing. Keep watching Yammy Noob.